G'day, I'm Paul, the Kia Seltos. It's one of the best-selling SUVs in Australia, and it's also in very high demand, so it has a bit of a waiting list on it. Kia has just revealed the updated version of the Seltos, and they've changed something in this that makes me very happy. I'll run through that later on. This is the top specification GT line. It's priced at just under $45,000, but if that's too expensive, the entire range kicks off at just under $30,000. This competes with things like Toyota Corolla Cross, the Hyundai Kona, the Honda HRV. There's a lot of those little SUVs in that segment. Today, we're going to do a deep detailed review of this car so if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of the review you can use the time codes on the screen or if you're on YouTube you can scroll down and use the chapters below and if you haven't done so already hit subscribe and the bell icon so you can find out every single time my shirt matches the car we're testing. Let's talk about the exterior. So you've got nine colors to pick from. All but orange is gonna cost you a little over 500 bucks. You've also got some two-tone options as well that are a little bit more expensive. So the Seltos, what has changed? So there has been a style update and I think it actually still looks really good. The Seltos has always, to me, been one of the better lookers in the segment. You've got the new Kia logo up the top there. This satin finish uh, instead of chrome, which I think is great. And then black through the center section here with these LED portions that connect in with those headlights, radar down the bottom, and more of that sort of non-chrome finish down the bottom of the car. Over on this side, you have LED headlights, including LED daytime running lights. I like that little strip down there as well. That looks pretty cool. We'll whip around to the side. Down here, you've got a set of 18-inch alloy wheels. In terms of the design, you've got a machined finish there on the outside, piano black in the center. A bit of wheel arch cladding. This isn't all-wheel drive, but you're probably not going to be doing any off-road driving in it, given that it has a ground clearance of 170 millimeters, but it's the thought that counts. Uh, up the top here, black finish on that wing mirror, indicator built into there, and then no camera down the bottom there because it does not have a 360 camera. This has the optional black colored roof. I quite like that, but if you do go down the path of the two-tone, it then removes your sunroof. So keep that in mind. Roof rails here, privacy glass. And then around the back here, shark fin aerial LED tail lights. Look at that, that is a very cool looking cluster. 4X, no, not the beer, uh, four wheel drive. Uh, Kia there and then Seltos down there. It's quite an interesting design down the bottom here. So it's a piano black finish. And then it has more of that material that we have up the front there as well with what looks like a rear fog light there. So I quite like the look of this. The, the styling update is really good. Kia's design lately has been fantastic and I really like the way this looks. So let me know what you reckon down there. Is the change enough to convince you to step up to the Seltos? Let me know what you reckon. We are inside the updated Seltos. This is what the key looks like. You've got Kia down the bottom there. Lock, unlock, remote start, boot, blank on the back. This sits inside your pocket. It is a proximity sensor key. And then once you're inside, you have a start button up the top here. I quite like this update because they've gone from having just the, the screen that's sat up here to having this dual setup similar to the new Sportage. And I think it really brings this car into the modern day and age when it comes to technology. So it's great to see they're actually thinking about this stuff. Um, the stuff that they haven't changed though is all this scratchy plastic up the top here and down the sides, which I was hoping they would do as part of this update, but they've kind of kept it all in. It would only take just a little bit of effort to make all that nice because the rest of this looks fantastic. So um, a little bit disappointing there, but that's okay. And then lashings of piano black around the bottom there. So nothing too outrageous. Um, in terms of your other touch points, this is firm but soft and then soft on the door. How soft are they? We've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Now build quality. Tiny bit of flex in the center there, but for the most part, this all feels good. If you own a Seltos, what's it actually been like in terms of build quality? Let me know down there. And then our door test. Yeah, nice and, nice and solid. Okay, infotainment. So you have two 10.25 inch displays here ahead of the driver. This one is a touch screen and that's your main infotainment screen. This one is not a touch screen, but you can configure some of the stuff here on the steering wheel. So in terms of your features, inbuilt satellite navigation, and then in addition to that, you have a stack of other cool little bits and bobs here. You can actually put the car into a quiet mode, which means you're, you're basically only playing music up the front here, letting the kids sleep in the back. Sound mood lamp, I don't know what that is. Ah, that's interesting. So it allows parts of the car to light up depending on the sound that's being played. So I reckon it's pretty cool. Uh, kids will have endless fun with that. Uh, voice memo as well, if you get any great 
uh, business ideas while you're out on the road, you can play those. You also have Kia Connect as well, which is the service that allows you to connect to the vehicle remotely to check its status. So it is a nicely loaded system. On the audio front, you have AM, FM, DAB, digital radio, and that's all plumbed through an eight speaker Bose branded sound system. It's a good sound system. And uh, I think that if you're into your music, you will appreciate having that. Smartphone mirroring, you have both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those are wired. This is what Apple CarPlay looks like so full screen integration nice and fast as well no dramas there and this is what android auto looks like again full screen integration with that side menu decent setup there as well head of the driver you have another display and you can whip through the menus there when you change the drive mode as well you get the menu changing which i think is pretty cool and then finally you have a head up display there it's projected onto this piece of perspex and that tends to work pretty well now, safety, uh, it is loaded to the hilt with safety tech. So you have autonomous emergency braking that works forwards and reverse. It detects pedestrians and cyclists as well. You have an auto dimming rear vision mirror, blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. Uh, you have a lane departure warning and a lane keeping assistant. We'll actually test that out later to see how well that works. You have radar cruise control, front and rear parking sensors and a reverse view camera. I'll show you what that looks like. So the quality is okay, it's sort of not groundbreaking stuff, but you do have a couple of different views to select from there as well. That's like a super size view and then a slightly closer view as well. And then this is where your sonars appear for parking. Now, what about your practicality? Uh, in terms of connectivity, you have a 12 volt outlet down here, a USB A port, a USB C port. You have a wireless phone charging pad up there. It's nice and grippy as well. In terms of storing your phone, you can kind of pop it anywhere. There is stacks of room in here for phone storage, which is great news. Um, coffee cup fits in there fine with no de-litting. There are just no teeth there. So when you do put a bottle in and stuff, it's gonna move around a little bit, but nothing too bad. A bottle fits inside the door there for the small one. We'll try a big one as well. Uh, let's have a look. No, no bingo there on the big one. You have more storage here in the center, quite a deep pocket there. And finally, you have a glove box over here that's pretty reasonably sized. On the comfort front, you have single zone automatic climate control, heated and cooled seats for the driver and front passenger, head steering wheel as well. Seats themselves are actually quite comfortable. Uh, they're perforated there for that air to come through, hug you in nicely. Seat adjustment for driver and front passenger is electric, so you can go forwards, backwards, backrest can go forwards, backwards. You can lift the front of the seat. Back of the seat, you also have lumbar adjustment too, and the driver gets two memory points. Steering is both tilt and reach adjustable. And on our reach test, all of this is easy to reach while you're driving. Second row of the Seltos, there's actually a surprising amount of room here. It looks kind of cramped, but once you're in, it's actually not too bad. So knee room's good, uh, toe room's good. Headroom is pretty good as well. You have one map pocket, uh, but now you have air vents here. You also have two USB-C slots just there, a little phone holder as well. Center armrest here with two cup holders, so it fits the bottle in nicely. Bottle fits inside the door as well. You have two ISOFIX points on the outboard seats, three top tether points as well. What about our window test? So it's manual up and down. Oh, so close. So cargo space, small SUV, is it any good? Let's have a little look, power tailgate, nice. So you've got a little over 400 litres of cargo space. It's actually not a bad sort of layout there. Um, the interesting thing is under the floor here, look at this, you have a full size spare tire, which I think is excellent news. I'll show you what it looks like with our bags in there. So laptop bag there, big suitcase there. So plenty of room in there. Uh, you can expand the space as well. So you gotta lean in to drop the second row. But once you do, that expands the space to just under 1400 liters. Okay, we have hit the road in the Seltos. Now there's two things that actually excite me about this update. Um, the first is the engine. So it carries over the 1.6 litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol, but it has more power, about 10% more, 16 kilowatts extra, now pushes out 146 kilowatts of power and 265 Newton meters of torque. But most importantly, they have ditched that horrible little DCT that was attached to this and it now uses an eight speed torque converter. And that means when you're taking off from a standing start, watch this, it accelerates smoothly. It's not jerky, it's not silly. It is just a traditional transmission mated to 
a pretty impressive engine. So from that front, it is great. And this actually helps the engine immensely because when you do get on the throttle, the gearbox kicks down quick enough and then it just gets up and moves. It is a punchy little engine and it perfectly suits this size of vehicle. And all of that's sent through an on-demand all-wheel drive system, which means that when it detects slip on the front axle, it sends torque to the rear and it gets you moving. So it's not a permanently engaged four-wheel drive system, but you do have this button here, which is the four-wheel drive lock button. You hit that and it will actually permanently send torque to all four wheels. It does that as a 50-50 split, kind of like a, a locking center differential or, or the sort of the more basic version of something like that. And it should only be used on unsealed surfaces. If you want to know why, click up here to watch a video where we explain four-wheel drive controls in a bit more detail. Now, Kia claims a combined economy of just over seven litres per 100 k's. We are currently sitting on 10.1, so slightly thirsty there. Uh, I was expecting that to be a little less than 10.1, so I think that is, that is pretty high. I think if you did a bit more highway driving, that would probably come down a little. Now, what's ride like? Well, look, in and around the city, it is pretty firm. And I think it's probably too firm for this type of thing. I know that it, it is the GT line, but it feels like they've dialed a bit too much firmness into it. And we can just see what it's like when we do finally hit our sine waves. Now let's talk road noise. There is a lot of it, uh, and it's all coming in through those tires. There is just a lot of, uh, yeah, especially at highway speeds, course ship roads, it really does get quite boomy inside this cabin. So something I think they probably need to work on for the next generation of this car. Okay, sine wave time. Let's jack our speed up to 130. This basically simulates overtaking on a dodgy country road here in Australia. Given the ride is so firm, I think it should perform okay here. So let's see how it goes. There's 130. Whoa, that's not very good at all. Wow, okay. That's strange. So I think the issue here is that it is softly sprung but quite firmly damped and that means in and around the city the ride is quite firm and you do feel a lot of that through the chassis but then when you are driving at higher speeds on those oscillating sections of road it really lacks body control at the top end so yeah it is a fine balance i'd probably prefer a little less firmness in and around the city and a bit more body control at those top ends to just nicely round it out okay so drive modes you've got a couple here to choose from eco normal sport let's pop it into sport and go for a little fang around our track gee that's actually that's actually pretty impressive wow there's a lot of traction out of those tires and steering feel is good as well it's actually quite surprising how how much pickup this has it's moving along really nicely all right so it's like across the back end of our track here yeah, there you go. It, it's really strange. It doesn't have a great deal of body roll at all. It sticks really nicely to the road. And that all wheel drive system is doing a really good job of preventing this from pushing wide through corners. I genuinely was not expecting this to be as engaging as it is. It is holding on for dear life through here. And I'm able to just lean on the throttle, extract the most that I can out of that turbocharged petrol engine onto the back straight here and see what this feels like. It is moving. There you go, Kia. All right. <laughs> it is moving. Okay. I wasn't expecting that from the Seltos. That is bloody awesome. So yeah, seriously impressive there. So Kia doesn't have an official zero to 100 time for the Seltos, but I think it should actually be better now that it's using a torque converter instead of a dual clutch so let's see how we go here we're in sport mode dial up some revs all right nice little punch in the back we go all the way to 120 as well to see our overtaking time nice that was that was very nice. Um, okay, so zero to 100 in 8.2 seconds. Our overtaking time, 80 to 120, 5.6 seconds. So it's pretty healthy figures there, I reckon, for a, uh, a small SUV. And now our reverse acceleration test. Come to a stop, pop that in reverse, here we go. Oh, 75 kilometers an hour. 
<laughs> that is unreal. Very impressive. Let's talk visibility. So uh, it's easy down the front there. I can see the edges of the bonnet that taper into the front end. Uh, the wing mirrors are nice and big with the blind spot monitor built into them and visibility at the rear is really good as well. Now you're planning on doing any towing? 1,250 kilograms of brake towing capacity and a turning circle of just under 11 meters. Okay, time to test our lane support systems. So I'm gonna get cruise control set to 70 k's an hour. There it is there, we'll turn our lane keeping assistant on okay so basically you can see there that that steering wheel is green it means that it is holding the vehicle centered to the lane it's doing a good job here i'm then going to test it in the two outer lanes as well so i'll we'll jump up there to our next lane so the banking of this actually simulates a much tighter turn for the car and will really put stress on our lane centering system so it is riding that line very closely. It's coming back towards the centre now, but keeps drifting back towards that line. Let's see how it goes here on our third lane. Okay, it's just triggered the steering. No. Okay, so uh, basically lane one and two, it works well. Lane three is a fail there for the Seltos. So the updated Kia Seltos, what do we reckon? It almost feels like a completely different car. That torque converter has totally changed it and makes it a fantastic driving experience. It's actually just really engaging and fun behind the wheel with that engine. It has plenty of punch and it's pretty roomy inside with the latest tech now. Uh, I think it is probably let down a little by the ride. The ride is too firm for my liking and then didn't have a great deal of body control over our sine waves. But outside of that it really is quite a hard car to fault and i think that if you are choosing an suv in this segment this really does tick all the boxes so let me know if you got one on order how long are you going to have to wait for it is it ages or are they coming soon let me know down there if you did enjoy this video please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon but until next time drive safely